The entire Bronx was never devastated, but there were large portions of the Bronx that did experience considerable devastation. And much of that devastation took place in the South Bronx. There are statistics on the number of fires that happened, and there were huge, huge numbers of fires every day. There were rows of abandoned buildings and all these lots with all these bricks in it, basically. I recall uh, seeing buildings that were burned out and wondering why. It was only later that I found out what the Bronx went through, and um, how it's rebuilt now is, is just tremendous to see. I was introduced to Bronx work when it first opened. Right here at the corner of 181st and the Grand Concourse, they opened up a little storefront, which was Citizen Advice Bureau. And my neighbor was one of their employees. And she said, Sally, go. They were giving out the smoke detectors. And that's what introduced me to Bronx work, that smoke detector. I started at Bronx Works in 1979. There was a paid staff of two, myself and one other. A lot of the work we did was housing related. People would come in with housing problems. Uh, we still served a lot of senior citizens then. They provided so many services for people in the community, as far as housing, health, anything that they needed help with. We would have seniors who would be the only person left in their building. We help people get benefits and relocate into other buildings that were safer. Anytime anybody wanted to find out anything, they would come to me, Sally, well, what can I do here? I said, you have to go to the Citizen Advice Bureau. You have to go to the Citizen Advice Bureau. I was born and raised in the South Bronx in the Hunts Point community. I clearly remember having to go directly to school, come directly back home, because you didn't want to interact with no one on the street because you never know where it may lead you. And I've seen the transition from when the Bronx was burning to now the Bronx is blooming, is how we like to refer to it. What helped the Bronx revitalize itself was housing. Rebuilding programs, rehabilitated housing that had been burned out. And then a plan from there was to bring in families to habitate those buildings and then to rebuild the communities. The city deserves huge credit for undertaking such a, a major urban transformation. I think what makes the Bronx different is the fact that you did have people organizing and saying, no, we're not going to simply stand by while our neighborhoods deteriorate. We want them to become livable again. We want them to become stable again. When I came to Citizens Advice Bureau in the 1990s, many buildings had been rebuilt. What lacked in uh, the areas, certain neighborhoods, were services. Citizens of Ice Bureau came into neighborhoods that were rebuilding and opened walk-in offices and other centers. Our role there was really to build community. And that idea really excited me. The 90s was a time for significant growth in, in our programs and our services. You know, in the early years, people with AIDS were shunned. People didn't want to be in a room with them. And we're one of the first groups that really provided compassionate services. Bronx Works was one of the first Bronx-based institutions to provide legal counseling services for immigrants. Seniors then were allowed to vote. I think they voted 99 to 1 to have us run their senior center.
Bronx Works has, over the years, almost eliminated street homelessness. There's been something like a 70% decline. We have a 93% retention rate. 93% of our guys that we house stay housed. Our programs were expanding rapidly. We were desperate for space and started talks with the Girls Club about a merger. That facility, that space, gave Bronx Works a place where they could really anchor a number of children and youth programs. It's a wonderful facility for children throughout their lifespan. Principals partner with community-based organizations to start new small high schools. We started the Community School for Social Justice, which is a small school for 200 students. We also started the Jill Chaffetz Transfer School. Before I went to JCTS, I have dreams. I didn't think I was going to make it out of high school. I guess I was like the typical Bronx kid. I was a stereotype. My school was like 5,000 kids. So it's like you feel invisible. We had metal detectors. So I remember I used to have to get up at five in the morning to be on the train by six, to make it to school by seven, so I could make the line to get through the metal detectors to get to my eight o'clock class. I didn't go to school, I used to cut. And um, I was on the verge of dropping out my junior year. Before Bronx Works, I was really feeling defeated when it came down to uh, dealing with the mother of my children, uh, dealing with my children. I met a coordinator, and she approached me about a program, Stronger Fathers for Stronger Families, which is, you know, that's right now. Just having fathers come in a group and share what was hindering them from being the father that they wanted to be. My mom started searching for schools and she came upon Joe Chaffetz. And that's how I got there. JCTS is like super small, it's like a hundred kids. I had an advisor and my advisor was always on top of me. She pushed me to do what I had to do. It motivates you because it's like someone cares and you feel like someone actually believes in you. What Bronx Works did for me, it really got me reconnected with the best part of myself. I realized that I could write. I have a talent for writing. And I entered a contest and I won. I was one of about 12 kids and I got to go to South Africa and meet Nelson Mandela. I walked out of there after I shook Nelson Mandela's hand. I'm like, my life is never gonna be the same. I don't, you don't, I don't look at the world the same. I don't look at myself the same. I've seen tremendous change since I've been at the agency from the 1990s. The deterioration that had taken place 35, 40 years ago has now ceased. The Bronx is a place of vitality, of hope. The Bronx has come a long way and there still are many struggles that we face. There's still a lot of work to be done to increase the employment rates, decrease poverty rates in general, to improve people's housing situations. From being the poorest congressional district to having the highest asthma rate also in the country. You look at any of the health indicators and the Bronx seems to be near the bottom. Healthcare and education, those two work together because if you're educated, you know how to take care of yourself. As the Bronx has evolved, the needs of Bronx residents has also evolved. And Bronx Works has been an institution that's been able to stay relevant. Over the years, Bronx Works has helped hundreds of thousands of people improve their lives.
One of my proudest moments is always seeing former clients come back to visit us. These individuals were five, 10 years out on the streets and they function as a part of society. I was able to graduate. I just got accepted into City College and I'm, you know, I'm, I want to become a teacher. Kind of just let kids know you can make it, whether you're in the Bronx, whether you live in a project, it doesn't matter. If there were more Bronx works, there would be, you know, more, more hope, more kids out there trying to do better. We went from a beautiful community to Bronx burning. And now it's on the upward trend.